been a busy day, but I'm going to try it. All right. See what we can accomplish. Okay, sounds good. Then we will open up the uh, June 11th budget workshop and um, roll call. All counselors are present because we're on Zoom. And we're moving to the FY21 municipal budget discussion and wrap up. All right, I'm going to try to share my screen. Sometimes this works and sometimes it takes me a few minutes. Ooh. Hi, Mike. While you're doing that, I just want to say that um, Tom and I talked to Casey, the auditor, the other day, and um, he complimented our finance staff and Sophie on being very prepared and saying that the learning curve from a couple of years ago has really, really done well and that he thought it looked pretty good. A happy K Casey is a happy Sophie. So where I think we are tonight is um, me just presenting kind of the high level where we are and you having a final conversation to give me some direction for the public hearing on Monday. Does it sound like I'm on the right path there? Yes. Okay. So, um, all counselors should have packets that were delivered with the summary material in it. Okay, good deal. So um, we are uh, currently at um, an assessment that is about $66,000 less than it was last year. Um, on the town side, $559,000 higher on the school side and $22,990 higher on the um, county side, which all nets to an increase of a little over $500,000. The revenue summary, we've talked a lot about revenue. Um, well, yeah. The, um, and this is just, um, the very, it's the same as it was when I uh, forecasted, um, reforecasted re uh, revenue sharing after we received the um, state revenue forecasting committee's initial um, interim report. So it looks like we're $140,000 down on revenue. Uh, it's really uh, quite a bit more than that from the town's perspective because we had been originally forecasting an, an increase of over 500,000. So um, this is this is quite a swing in our projected uh, revenue. So when we look at expenses um, today, we are at um, 10.5 million dollars. If you look, um, the operating expenses are up 27,318 dollars. Debt is up 6,900 dollars. Economic development expenses are down. Remember that those expenses um, are net to zero impact on the um, tax rate because they're funded out of the TIF districts. Uh, we're projecting an overlay of 75,000. That usually goes up or down depending on how we need to round um, the tax uh, commitment. And capital budget is now at um, 972 thousand dollars. The big change with the capital budget was the shifting of North Main Avenue. We were scheduled to do that next year. Instead, we're going to raise half the funds next year and complete it in FY22. So counselors asked me, how did, what are the, some of the things that we cut and what were the dollar values with that? So when I add up what we cut from the initial draft budget that we would look to have restored, um, that totals $387,294. And it is um, the part-time assistant clerk, if you want to go back to full-time hours to the public. Um, the, we reduced some training that we think 
most of the training reduction places, it was um, that we felt that training probably wasn't going to be offered um, and, or we weren't going to be wanting our staff to travel. Uh, so there are several places where we cut um, training back. Um, we didn't put any um, appropriations for future um, spending, so no reserves. That's about $240,000. We eliminated the contract cleaning line, which I think we can get away with for a year, but we're going to want to get those uh, that equipment back in. Um, we had a planned replacement of the fire chief's um, vehicle, and we moved that to FY22. That's going to need to be um, done. That's, that is on its... Um, I won't say last legs, but it doesn't have a whole lot more left. Um, we delayed filling. Oh, I can take this 14,000 out because we captured that. I'm sorry, I left that in. We've changed the approach to the library and I'll talk to you about that in just a minute. Whoops. Um, we um, have reduced programming um, and outreach for the first quarter at the library, which is another uh, $1,000. Travel, um, community policing details have been cut from Parks and Rec. We probably would want to put those back in. We've had a lot of success with those. Um, reductions in building and maintenance, um, cutting the trail budget line and going to reserve instead, reducing um, what we put in the budget for Gould's Landing, um, cutting back the special projects line and the new program line and the scholarships lines. I mean, we, we kind of trimmed just about everything except for people out of Parks and Rec. Um, we cut one of the two cruisers um, that have been ordered. Uh, next year, we're, we're going to have to do um, two cruisers. We're just, we've got, the, that fleet is aging. We cut the uh, police intern position and we cut Winter Sam by 50%, cut the summer, the town manager's summer intern position. So that all happened before you guys even ever got the budget. During the budget process, we ended up um, cutting another $103,113 by, by leaving the um, shared w, uh, P, public works WPCF labor, laborer position vacant through the end of the year. The library um, part-time library position will be vacant um, through the end of the year and the pool is not going to be open for the summer. We also, I put on here not as part of the 103, but I put on here the, the delay of North Main Avenue um, just to make sure that people knew that that was um, something that, that you had um, taken out of the budget this year. So with the library, just as a, a, an update, after talking to Lori, we have actually made a decision um, to that the circulation manager is really an important position right now. We have um, an employee who is quite capable of doing that and they have been reassigned into a full-time, as of July 1, a full-time circulation manager position, no change in pay. It was the, the pay rates for those two positions they are on the same pay scale. Um, and which leaves um, us with a full-time children's services person that we would be looking to hire instead of a ch the circulation manager. Um, Lori was quite sure that um, there was an awful lot of technical pieces to the circulation manager position that would be um, difficult to bring somebody up to speed as quickly. And the other full-time employee was excited to take on a change. So it, I think it worked well, and I think we'll, we will be able to fill that um, children's services, children's librarian position. That ad is out for an anticipated FY21 hire as we had, as we had talked about. So what we're leaving is that children's clerk, that 20 hour a week position is um, gonna be vacant for the entire year. So Sophie, will that new position start, well, new, relatively new position start in July or October? So we had talked, my understanding based on our conversations was that we felt like it was important for that position to start 
sooner rather than later. So the budget that you have has us bringing that person on sometime late July or August. And then being able to take the circulation clerk position and add about 10 hours a week until that until the other position is filled so that we can keep the, the work moving ahead in the library. I think that's what you wanted me to do. Yes, okay. I like it when I see this, this is good. So this is where we are right now. We're at, um, on the mill rate, a mill rate of uh, $28.15. $10.10 of that belongs to the town. $1.57 belongs to the county. And $16.48 belongs to the school. So we're going up six cents, the county eight cents, and the school a um, dollar and 56 cents. And then I just put this on here in case you guys had fund balance questions. I don't think we need to go through it again. That's up to you. Are you all set for me to stop sharing? Um, Sophie, I'm not sure when the best time to bring this up is, but I would like us to at least consider um, not having that tax rate increase on the municipal side. I, I know that means um, I, I'm, I'm not in favor of additional cuts. Uh, for me, that would mean um, adding the $27,000 more revenue to give us a flat tax rate. Um, and I say that because our projections on revenue are so challenging this year. Um, we could easily see $27,000 more, or we could see $150,000 less. So I don't think the 27,000 is a significant factor either way, but I do think that being able to demonstrate to the public that our hard work has resulted for this year in a flat tax rate, given the crazy times that we're living in, has some advantages. I don't know how others feel about it, but I'm just going to throw that out as a, a thing we ought to. Doesn't the word flat tax meaning the taxes are not going up? Well, the flat tax in terms of municipal tax rate. So I, we have no control over the county and we have no control over the school. The only thing that we have control over is the municipal portion of the tax rate. And for $27,000 and six cents on the mill rate, I, I just think that it's worth um, not showing any increase. And how do we do that, Tom? We do it by um, showing $27,000 more revenue from revenue sharing. Um, just, and again, just I, projected, I, a projected, just a projected. Yes, it, it's all projected anyway. Right. Um, and I think Sophie has, would, would, would agree with me that it's been very, very challenging to project that. Some communities are looking at uh, almost the same revenue sharing as they received last year, and some are looking at significantly less. And, um, you know, if, if, if it changes dramatically, we're going to have to revisit our, our spending pattern for next year. Um, what did, Sophie, what did we project? We projected 300,000 cut. So we, um, last year. Yeah, so last year we we <clears throat> had a revenue sharing budget of 1,513,835. We are projecting 1,248,160, which is a decrease of $265,675. So here is, you can't compare apples like it's apples and apples because it's not, Sam. The, the pie is changing yeah. next year by statutory formula. So I looked at the projected revenue sharing that came out on the at the beginning of March that had us going from 1.5 million to 2 million because our um, municipalities are going from 3% of the receipts that the state gets all the way up to 3.75% of the receipts. So the the pie by statute was gonna get bigger. And then the economy okay. shrunk. And 
So I'm trying to figure out not from this year, but from next year's projection, which includes the higher percentage, but then what percent are we actually going to get of that? So what I did is I looked at in the first quarter, I think it was 55%. In the second quarter, we get 65%. And in the third and fourth quarters, we get 75% which gets to a number that, like I said, I've said on several occasions, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm unduly harsh or pessimistic, but I also don't think I'm as optimistic as others. I think I'm in the middle of the road trying to give us a place that if we had to move, it wouldn't be a huge swing either way. But I think there, Tom is absolutely right. There is a very high likelihood that um, when we get back to the, um, in July or August, when the Revenue Forecasting Committee releases its updates, we very likely are going to be back at the table as council, either looking at more money or less money in revenue sharing. Tom, can I ask you, do you think that it would be worthwhile, uh, before we get to answering your question as a group, if we talked a, a little bit about what some of our top priorities would be should the revenue sharing come in way above or way below expectation or no? Oh, sorry, you're on mute, Tom. I'm, I'm fine with that either way, uh, Meg. I, 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 I just have given this a lot of thought and, and it's just, you know, my, my opinion on it that for that small amount of money, $27,000 and six cents on the tax rate, it would be nice for us to be at the same place mun municipal tax wise as we were last year. I, I agree with that sentiment and that idea. And also I think Meg brings up a, a, an important question too, um, especially given even just the beginning of this meeting is like, you know, how we are not buying the police cruiser this year and they were definitely buying it next year. And, you know, other things that have been pushed back to next year, we need to look at that. So if we get more money, I think, I think we have a good idea what we're going to be doing with that. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. I mean, I was going to say that, um, I mean, again, this is, um, it's a political decision. It's, you know, what, what are we projecting? What message are we projecting to the taxpayers? Um, I guess I would wonder about, you know, for example, if we were suddenly to see a much more optimistic forecast, I would want to be talking very seriously about putting back money into reserves. Because if we're looking at, you know, um, now, it, it, with the um, original cuts that Sophie made before she presented the budget and the ones that we have gone through in the last few weeks, we're looking at half a million dollars almost that has been cut out of this budget, but almost half of that is reserves. And so mm -hmm. what message does that, I, I guess I think about what, what is the message of, we're gonna play with the numbers so that it's zero. And then if we do get more money, we're gonna, put it in this direction, or if we get less money, we're going to, do, do you see what I'm saying? Like, I, I wonder about putting forth one message and then if the forecast is dramatically off one way or the other, having to say, well, I know we kind of said we were going to do a certain thing, but now we have different plans because the numbers change, if that makes sense. I, I, my, my thought is that, uh, that, I'm not as concerned about whether or not it's 0 0.06 or it's zero. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I have not, I have, I get a lot, my phone has been ringing. My email has been buzzing with, with taxpayers contacting me about the town and not one of those people has said they're concerned about taxes. Those people have been contacting me about cut positions being cut and wanting programs that we do not have now. And so I end up saying any additional program we have would cost additional money. Wonderful that you would like us to have programs we don't have. Let's brainstorm what, you know, we, let's talk about it. We cannot put it in the budget now because it takes planning to make a new program. But I've had people contacting me saying they want Orno to be 
have more services and not cut the things that we're cutting that involve uh, people staffing. And, and then of course, I'm sure you guys have gotten the, we had one email that we all got about find, trying to find out about our police. And I've had people asking me what percent of the budget is the police and what, it, you know, how could we cut the police? Because there's a national discussion about changing the way municipalities fund their police forces. So um, I, I'm, I, I understand, Tom, that, the, that you think that getting it from 0.06 to zero is important. And, and yet I, my concern is that we are gonna be hit hard next year if all of the things we put off this year are things that we must fund, do next year and we haven't put any money into fund balance this year that we would go from having it looked very nice and zero this year, but then next year we would have to, uh, the municipal numbers would go up quite a bit and be a big jump. And I think mm -hmm. that next year people are gonna be in more dis economic discomfort than they are after three months of, of, of the economic problems we've had right now, that we're gonna, people will be, will be upset about a big jump next year. So I, I, I'm more about maybe incremental, especially since the one, when people voted for the school, they knew, they thought it might be as much as, as 1.8 higher or two, and it's not that high. So um, anyway, there's, there's my thought, is that, that uh, trying to get to zero is, and then next year we're going to end up having big costs and we still won't add any of these programs and people say they want the rec program to be different they want you know more time in the library and they you know all the things that would be lovely but we don't have the money for it or the planning for it i, I don't think i Lori, i don't think that the 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 idea is coming from um cutting anything to get down to zero uh, okay i don't think that's not what tom said at all it's a matter of since we're looking at a projection of, of what that cut will be it's like we you know i mean it's like it's modifying that in a realistic way that we're still as a projection we don't know what's going to happen in july so i don't know tom you can articulate this better but i just think that it i, I didn't want you to think Lori, that we're talking about cutting things out so tom i turn it well, over it visually it looked like we have a zero and to get to that zero we made a lot of choices and i guess what i'm saying is visually i'm i feel like people would be fine if it if we went up point one like 10 10 cents on the municipal and then that gave us enough extra room to put something into reserves or to not end a one of these you know what to bring someone on sooner to do some of the jobs that that aren't being filled right away so i understand he was not you know he's talking about that 20 you know that twenty seven thousand, which is just a projection but right. i guess what i'm saying is that that we could also just make a projection that brings in a little more causes our taxes to go up a smidge more, but then next year, hopefully we won't have as a big a jump in our taxes. I mean, with all due respect, I don't think that's, that's not ac totally accurate in terms of how it works. So one of the things, I mean, we could fund all the things that we, that council cut $100,000 worth of stuff out of the budget. We could fund all of that and then just say, and we project that revenue sharing will increase by $100,000, yay, zero. I mean, they're all projections, all of the revenue sharing revenue projections, it's all, it's all guesswork. And Sophie's doing her best to find what she thinks is as close to a number as possible, but there is no possible way to tell or predict. So we're not necessarily focusing on what happens with next year's tax rate as much as we're talking about, um, you know, in the July, August, you know, uh, meetings, what are we going to hear about in terms of the money we will actually get for this FY21 budget as opposed to what number we put in this sheet that we're looking at right now today? How close are we going to be? And then based on that deficit or increase, what are we going to do with the budget that we uh, enacted? How about if we, um, if we, I, I'm on the fence. Um, I think I'm on the fence either way, but how about if we go uh, we continue with Meg's suggestion about going through first and then maybe tagging this discussion again um, near the, at the end of our, our uh, conversation. Um, as for, for me, um, one, I, I, I think the projection, just to follow that up, <clears throat> I think I'm, I'm okay with moving the projection up 27,000. 
uh, especially if we're going to revisit it in July or August with better numbers. Um, as far as the priorities, for me, putting back the public works person would be probably the first thing that I would like to see um, because we do hear a lot of things about sidewalks as soon as as soon as the snow falls. So that would be a big position for me. I do agree reserves would be a good thing to to try and put back, especially if we're looking at, you know, having to buy a fire chief truck and, uh, and two police cruisers. So to me, that would be a way to kind of brace what, what Lori's talking about is so that we're not all next rates tax rate next year's tax rate doesn't go out through the to the roof so those would be my top couple of items to see on the priorities list and and i i would be right there with you cindy and meg i i think that uh looking at at the position that was cut in public works would be something that that, that i'd want to do as a priority but i think we restoring some of the reserves would be a very high priority for me as opposed to putting back in some other things that we have that we've cut out. Remember that we're hoping that, that this uh, revenue sharing decline is not a long lasting thing. We're hoping the economy is going to recover at some point. I'm going to see much more favorable revenue sharing next year. Not to, I'm sorry, not to interrupt the council um, conversation, but when we talk about that public works WPCF position, just remember that's a shared position and we've got some really tight constraints on right. the um, WPCF side. So if we were gonna put that back, one of the things I'd have to come to you with would be a suggestion that we decrease WPCF's payment to the town by whatever that position would increase their budget. So it kind of ends up as a double, mm. double cost on the town side this year. So just be aware of that. Or could we look at a six month contract with someone for for uh, winter maintenance so cindy we can look at anything um <laughs> but the reason that we went to the full-time position is because we had such a hard time getting people um that would just because we had part-time winter help and part-time summer help in wpcf and we had we really struggled with both of them and had some damage done to equipment and You just got muted for some reason. We can we can look at anything, um, but I would just suggest it will be a longer conversation. Unlike reserves, where if you want to put reserves back, that's easy for me to write two hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars down. Yeah. Um, but just wanted to point that out. I'm gonna mute myself again so you guys can continue. <laughs> Terry, did you? Yeah, I, I, I um, it was, it was good to kind of listen uh, to what everybody's thinking, but I, I kind of go back to when we just well, the last time. I, I worry so much about infrastructure. I know that typically we hear a lot of stuff about like programs and stuff like that, but usually my conversations with people that I actually engage with is like they worry a lot about like the sidewalks, the streets, it's like that. So that's kind of like a. Uh, a, 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 a trigger for me, but I, I, um, I agree with the, the thought of, of, you know, putting it into reserves because I think it's going to actually be more important. So I'm kind of in, on camp with you guys on, on that, that thought, but yeah, I, 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 I just really, I worry again still about the, the, the infrastructure of our community. And it's not simply always saying somebody wants a program and they want this one and that and that, because for every person who says that, there's probably equally three or four other people who are thinking exactly the way that I'm projecting right now. So yes, I'm, I'm kind of where you guys are at and your thoughts. I, I kind of agree with everybody. <laughs> what, you know, and, uh, and, and they're all really important and we're torn in so many directions. And Lori, I absolutely, I love the point you made. I absolutely, you know, I agree with that too. It's going to be, you know, but at the same time, all of this is, we don't know yet, you know, and we won't know for a little while here. Um, but I understand the concern, Terry, absolutely. The sidewalks, especially that's been, we've been waiting with bated breath, um, you know, for that and we'll see what happens. 
So I make this, <laughs> I guess it's not an argument. I just, maybe it's a comment. I make this comment every year around this time. Um, there are these two layers of services that the town provides. And one layer of these services is the surface stuff. It's community programming and sidewalks and the things that people notice when they walk around town or just in their lives around town. And then there's this other bulk of services that the town provides that people either just take for granted as in, well, these should just happen because that's what towns should do, or they don't even notice them happening. Like we can have, you know, the, the sewer system underneath the street falling apart because it's made of wooden logs instead of modern pipes. And people might not know that when they're passing over that street. So um, the, the tricky thing for me is, um, on the one hand, you know, I, of course, I want the community that has the most programming and the great library services and all of the, the community based stuff that supports um, folks in the town, that surface level stuff, the services that, that people see on the daily basis. I want all those things and I wish that they could take priority, but there's part of me that um, keeps thinking that I don't think a lot of people understand how dire the situation is in terms of like what Terry was saying with like infrastructure and all those subterranean concerns that may not be totally visible to the average person walking around town that are huge costs, huge concerns. Um, we struggle every year and it gets tighter and tighter and more and more difficult to fund those projects. We keep kicking the can down the road. So even though the community might cry out for, well, I want more programs and I want more services and I want my sidewalk plowed as soon as I see snow, I get that too and I want it too. But on the other hand, until more people understand how tight and how dire the situation is with all the rest of the stuff, um, then I'm not sure, I, there's not much that council can do year after year or that town government can do year after year. Sometimes residents in the community might have to say, well, wow, my town can no longer afford to shovel the sidewalks in front of my house. I guess I should probably start looking somewhere else to figure out why my town doesn't have that money. Um, so I don't want to punish people, in a, especially in a, in a year where everyone's feeling an economic pinch but also what's it going to take for us to be able to actually fund the infrastructure and the community programming and not have to do kind of a shell game every year? A lot more revenue, I think. <laughs> so um, we, we made a step in that direction by taking a part of our town and saying that, or we're in the process of saying that people can have accessory dwelling units or cut cut properties and make other you know subdivide properties or make duplexes and that increases the amount of revenue that comes from that those what originally were individual parcels if they become duplexes or double parcels uh, and we could we could incentivize we could we could look at our whole town that way and say how can we increase the number of people who are paying into our tax base besides that we would you know, make the, make it easier for people to find a place to live here. We would have more people here, and that would be more revenue. And we don't, you know, we don't have right now. That's not a program. We don't have an active program of trying to figure out how to do that. We're we're, I mean, it's active, but it's a it's a long, it's, we're doing a slow march. We're not it's, we're not trying to bring people in here to build build new buildings. We're we're just doing the, the slower way, but, that, but that's one way that we could increase revenue. Um, so I think, so we have some options for priorities, um, but I guess I would go back to, we're not quite sure that any of those are gonna happen. Um, so, should we kind of take a consensus on whether you're willing to increase the revenue projections uh, to get it to a zero tax rate increase for the town um, or you want more discussion or where are we? I don't think we need more discussion. Okay. So everybody is silent. <laughs>
<laughs> so everybody's pretty much comfortable with presenting a, a zero increase? I would say that it, part of me feels like if we can't make it work without budging the numbers, then what, are we really making it work? I, I guess there's part of me that feels that way, but I also, if it, if it, I don't feel strongly enough about it that I would really die on that hill. So if that is the, if that's the consensus of the group, I'm, I'm comfortable with it. I see the logic in it and I can be comfortable with it. It does also seem a little bit like a shell game to me, but uh, you know, I would, I, I would be okay with it is what I'm saying. Like, I, 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 I don't see it as fudging the numbers. I see it as, the initial figure was an estimate and we're just reviewing that estimate and raising it a little bit. Right. And, and, and I have great respect for Sophie's ability to project things. I've been on the council only two and a half years, but she is, she and her staff have an incredible ability to project out how much things will cost. And this is a bit of magic to try to project out how much money we'll get from the state when you can't tell how the economy of the state, how quickly it's tanking. <laughs> and, uh, and, but, but I think that she's the pros, of all of the, us in this Brady Bunch view I have, I think that Sophie and her staff are the ones that are most qualified to make those projections. So I personally don't feel like I would wanna say we should change that number because it helps us get to zero. I, I think we should stick with the number that she gave us because she's the person best able to give us that number. And if I were going to fudge it at all, I would say, let's round up. Instead of having 0.06, we have, we're going to, ours is going to go up by uh, something that makes it a, a, the whole tax increase we're proposing to be some round number. And then we would have that much more that money that would come in that we get to put towards things. If in case Sophie's right. And if she's wrong, we're being more conservative than she was. So Tom, I, I guess I, I, I want to <laughs> apologize for being a little, <laughs> no, that's okay. maybe a little flippant, um, but I guess what, by using, you know, fudge and shell game, but I guess what I, I'm really trying to express is like, um, we, we were, Sophie worked very hard to cut 387, $294 from the original budget she wanted to propose to us. And we worked very hard and thought very carefully about the additional 100K. Um, and I guess, I don't know, if we're thinking of this as a purely political decision, I can very, very much see the wisdom behind your argument. And I can also feel totally comfortable with it if that's how it goes. The other thing that I think about though is that $27,000 almost is like a little tiny red flag. Like we worked as hard as we could. We all worked as hard as we could to try to, you know, get this number as close to zero as possible because we understand how difficult this is for the taxpayers every year, but this year in particular. And we just can't get there unless we're willing to go farther and make more drastic cuts that we don't think the community wants. So even though it's only $27,000, to me it's almost a little bit symbolic of, mm -hmm. we tried so hard, but we couldn't get all the way there. Um, I don't know, but again, I'm comfortable with your suggestion, Tom, I'm just putting out just a little bit of another, another side to think about. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm also Good. kind of on board also with the kind of mentality that, that Meg was just saying. I, I get, Tom, where you're going with this, and I can totally appreciate it also. Um, I, but I, I'm, I'm also kind of following other communities who are having much harsher times than we are. Um, and, and I think that, once again, we did do an amazing job to really kind of go through this to make sure that we cut as much as we could possibly cut. Um, and yeah, so I'm, 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 I'm in kind of like that same kind of camp with like, maybe it, people will be like, it's the, 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 that small movement, even though it's, we would love to have gotten to zero, the reality still is, is that it's been a tough year, so. I guess I might just take a counter side and say, when you look at the overall tax rate, it's a dollar seventy above what last year's was. And so I know that we are only contributing six cents, but that is a big jump in, in taxes. And so if if we can do something to alleviate some portion of that tax rate 
tax increase, shouldn't we? Um, just so that because a $28.15 tax rate is a lot of money. It is. And I, that's what, that's kind of where I was with that, with that, was that that's a high mill rate, you know, and, um, and trying to alleviate some of the taxpayer woes. Cause again, you know, people in our community are also projecting what they can afford next year. And um, it'd be hard to hit them with anything higher than that. I don't, don't agree, don't agree that we need to raise the projected municipal tax rate. Um, like I said, everybody's made really good arguments and I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm on the fence, um, but I will go along with, um, I think projecting an extra 27,000 isn't that much of a, of a deal. Um, and, um, and there's just so many, <laughs> there's just so many ways that this could go. Um, but, but yeah, definitely not a raise in taxes in a dollar 70. And again, you know, we voted, you know, we voted for, I mean, people knew that the the um, the mill rate was going to go up, but it can't go up so high that we're like the highest in the state. I mean, it's just um, it's just hard to, you know, it's just hard to fathom that um, at this moment, you know, in yeah. time. Sophie, you want to add something? So I try to stay out of the wonderful discussion that council is having because you guys, when you guys actually get going, it's kind of neat to sit back and watch. But I just. I understand where Meg's coming from. I really do. And um, I think everybody worked so hard on this budget. Um, you don't pass things to make my life easy. I know that. That's not your job. But um, I can just envision as the tax collector whose name goes on the bottom of these bills that we are so close and it is about a projection that for me, I sat and played with numbers to get to. It's, it's not like if, if this were a normal year and I saw a forecasted projection of 1.28 million and you were thinking you should just add 30,000 to it, I'd be like, whoa, is that smart? You're playing with the numbers. This is me sitting here saying, why didn't I just add $30,000 to the number? Because that is how flexible I think that number is. And I think when people come pay their tax bill, they do not understand that they are not simply paying for town services. It doesn't matter how, how much we write it all over the bill. They don't understand that a dollar and 56 cents went to, is going to the school uh, more and eight cents more is going to the county and what they get for that. And quite honestly, they're not going to remember that they went in, into the ballot, you know, cast a ballot saying that they wanted something that was going to increase their tax rate. Or I'll also get the third of the community that voted against that increase in taxes. So from just from the staff perspective of the difference in the narrative, it's council's narrative. I can't, I'm not even trying to control it. I'm just saying they're, as the person who collects the tax, I hear it. I hear it from people who make a special trip into town hall so that they can give us their check and make sure that we understand how upset they are with increases in the tax rate. So that's all I, I wanna share. And that while I appreciate everybody's confidence in my projections, uh, you have more confidence than I do. I, I am trying just to keep us at a place where that we'll, we would be able to adjust later on in the summer if we needed to. If we weren't looking at such cuts in the budget and needing to make significant change in the budget, I would have suggested that we not adopt a budget yet and just run through with last year's budget, which is what the charter allows us to do. But because we are cutting the budget and we'll have less money to work with, I re we need to get a new budget in place and then revise it. I just want to, I agree with that. Um, I agree th th with flexibility, but also, I mean, I think, I think there are a lot of people that do know what they voted for, that do know the expenses. And even though, and there are some people that can, can afford this sort of, you know, 
there's a range, you know, of, of our, but is an educated and impassioned population. They do care, but I think everybody sort of gets that reminder, like I'm paying this bill now and it's pretty big and I am pretty surprised. And, you know, so I don't want to take anything away from our town and their ability to understand, you know, where this comes from. Granted, people are focused and concerned on things that are often right in front of them, be that a snow covered sidewalk or a tax bill but I certainly wouldn't want to uh, imply that they don't understand, you know, where this, the taxes are going. <laughs> so, one last comment is um, Rob Yerksa, who is an attendee today, because he has nothing else that would be fun to do. Um, <laughs> It texted me once again to remind me that the other n arbitrary number that we have in there is North Main Avenue, where we said it costs 400000 We need 200000 to save for next year, where we'll need another 200000 Another option would be to say we'll do 170000 this year and 230000 next year. So that is... Um, Maybe maybe that's an easier way to go and we can review the North Main Avenue costs when we get the projections. Well, and his thought too is that that is a lot easier for if the revenues come in higher, that's a matter of just putting a little bit more into the infrastructure reserve that you're gonna create on Monday night anyway. Okay. So he's smart. I think that's a good idea. Actually, I, like, I like that suggestion. Good thing you yeah. went to Orange High School. Oh. Good thing he had nothing better to do tonight. <laughs> Rob's showing off right now. Yeah, Rob waited to the end of this to go like, by the way. <laughs> yeah, a little Hunger Games match here for a second there. Right? So um, I'm seeing more smiling faces with that suggestion. So maybe we should go with that. Yep. That's uh, everybody's. I'd be happy with that. Yeah, I, I think that's a good. I think that's a good suggestion. It's not an arbitrary number. It's it's uh, it's more concise and yep. Okay. Gives us a direction. I think that's awesome. I have a I have an amazing staff, so we count on them for little nuggets Thanks like to Rob. that. So um, I can make that change. The um, my thought is when we put the budget together, um, I think that the fact that things are still up in the air needs to be a central theme of the presentation so that when people see $2, uh, um, can I, yeah, 28, um, oh, nine. 28 oh, 09 is what's going to be the published mill rate. Um, and, um, but I'll just make it really clear that we're, that there are some really big pieces that are still in flux. Is yep. there anything else? So every year, every year I try really hard to make sure that people understand the components of the tax rate and try to walk through them. This year I thought I'd have a couple slides on revenue sharing and how we're projecting it um, so that people kind of understand that. Um, and I wanted to spend some time with people on what they get for the money. So I'm, I'm kind of envisioning a little bit different um, presentation that you're used to getting. But when there are questions about, you know, the large percentage of the police budget, you know, the budget that we spend on policing when it's like, like right around what, 13, 12 or 13%. Um, and for them to see kind of where their tax dollars are going is kind of my thought. And um, to make sure that they also clearly understand what isn't going to be happening because of the choices that were made in this budget. Um, that's my thought. If you're good with that, then that's how I would plan to go yep. through. That work? That sounds yep. good. I would also, I mean, I, you're, I know you're going to talk about revenue projection. I, I guess even though the word projection is in <laughs> revenue, <laughs> revenue, like revenue sharing projections, Maybe we maybe spend a little bit more time than usual. I'm not sure that people really understand even, again, even though it's projections in the phrase, I'm not sure people really understand it's money that doesn't exist yet. So yeah. 
um, if you could really kind of lean on that in the presentation, I think that would be helpful. Yep. Do you need anything else? Sir? Well, no, because usually you're just thrilled with what I put out there. So <laughs> I'm just going to assume I can try again. So what colors are going to be this year? I mean, last year you kind of went a lot of browns, so. Uh... No browns this year. We got some, We got to have something cheery. I've actually found a, a template that I kind of like that we're going to try. My beloved husband has suggested that I do this all with M&Ms. And <laughs> so who knows? What I prefer Skittles, Skittles, so he has some Skittles. <laughs> don't use a lot of red when we're doing budget, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so Monday... Um, Monday is a seven o'clock meeting. Yeah, we had to do it at seven, Tom, because um, we had some pre notices that had to go out for the TIF, yep. and we weren't sure where we were going to be at that time. So yep, it's, and I'm sorry, it's going to be a long meeting. <laughs> well, at least I can sit in a comfy chair. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Um, so before we get to the brief town manager update, um, we've had some comments from people regarding the statement that we put out. And um, so, and the comments were basically, where do we go from here? And I, I think Megan had some suggestions as to next steps. And so we'll throw yeah. it out to the council. So yeah, I wanted to see whether folks kind of had any desire to do this thing that I was thinking about. Um, so as you guys know, because I, I kind of spoke to it in the writing of the statement, I wrestled with the idea of putting it out at all, uh, even though I participated in writing it, because I believe that it's important for public figures to speak out and to take a stand, but these acts of solidarity, which aren't meaningless, are infrequently followed up with change or with action. Yep. And um, so I've been thinking a lot about how we can actually address that and not just kind of talk. Um, so I think that council has made it really clear for many years what type of values and culture it expects from its police department and our town manager and police chief embrace these things and they are working hard to achieve them. But I know that we're not perfect. Um, I spoke about OPD's community policing efforts and the accreditations at that recent protest gathering on campus. And there were people who spoke in response about negative experience, the experiences that they've had with police in our community. And I talked to those people after the gathering one-on-one, -on -one, which was helpful to get some more insight into their experiences, but it, it wasn't nearly enough. Um, and so I think that in our first step to kind of take action, we should listen and to make space for voices and lived experiences of black and indigenous and uh, people and people of color in our community. And so what I'm proposing is um, starting at the end of summer, beginning of fall, um, maybe, when, maybe when students are coming back, if they're coming back um, in some capacity, um, that we hold um, a series of action planning sessions. Um, we could reach out to the Islamic Center, the Penobscot Nation, uh, UMaine's Office of uh, Diversity and Inclusion, um, and then formally make space for um, folks to come uh, and, and sort of express their experiences with and feelings about law enforcement in our community. Um, and it would also give them an opportunity to ask questions about what we are doing and what our values are and maybe what we aren't doing. Um, from the town, I would like to see maybe uh, two councillors, chair and committee chairs, maybe um, our town manager, our police chief, perhaps our police captain. And then these sessions could take place over a variety of, of days at different times to give people as much access as possible. Um, based on, on their schedules. And after these um, sort of action planning sessions, we could, um, we could put out a document that says, this is what we heard. And these are steps we think we could take to address these concerns in the community. Um, and then at that point, if what we thought we heard isn't what people felt they said to us, they could let us know about that. 
Um, so I feel like it would be a good starting point um, to listen first and then start planning. Um, because I, there's no easy solution and there's no one size fits all solution. And I really feel strongly that we need to work together towards this common goal as a community. And when I say community, I mean residents and students and visitors and counselors and staff and, and also police officers because they are an important part of our community too. So um, I, I don't know if folks feel like this would be a good first step, but um, that's what I've got. It sounds like a lot, but it's, it does sound like a good first step. And that was one of my questions that I was gonna, that I was gonna ask, which you just answered was, um, you know, it, it seems like that we should have a member of the police force on one of these committees, if not, you know, whoever wants to, two or three, if not Josh, but I'm sure he doesn't have enough time um, yeah, to do this. Well, but. I, originally, I was thinking of them as listening sessions, but I feel like that term has just been like a band-aid and then nothing happens. Like there's a listening session and then people listen and then they just go on about their lives. So I, I was started thinking of it as like action planning session and thinking, yes, the, 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 that it would be town staff and counselors and representatives of the police listening to what folks have to say, but also using that opportunity to plan to address those things that they hear. Do you see this, Megan, as in person? Um, if we if we're not able to meet, <laughs> I know it's projected. If we're not able to meet in person, yeah, I would love to be in person. And one of the benefits of doing multiple sessions, in addition to um, uh, making opportunities for people who have different schedules and different lives, um, another opportunity is that we could keep them small group sessions, which could work with social distancing. Um, so that we, I feel like the smaller, more intimate the crowd, the more we can actually accomplish and the more people can really open up and, and let their, you know, talk about their experiences as opposed to a big room full of people. I'm a, I'm a trained facilitator in um, restorative practice and that's what it sounds like you're proposing, which is nice. I like that. So Meg, I want to say, you know, I, I like this. I, I One of my concerns from day one has always been about, you know, doing the the, 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 the letters, the notes, the, the things that typically we're told, they're just, they're, I mean, they're, they're nice gestures, but it really is boots, uh, boots to the ground and who's going to do the stuff. And I, I think it's very important that instead of us posting stuff or doing things out there, that we actually put our... Our, our, our work to make effective change actually happen. And that means that we as counselors, um, definitely as counselors, that we have to do a lot of work. And it's not just saying, I'm gonna make a statement, I'm done, move on. So I, I think this is a great first step. I think the statement was a great first step. I think this is an excellent uh, follow-up and, and add substance to it. Um, I'm glad that there is there is a call to action. There's a plan coming forward on this. I think this is incredibly important. Um, one of the frustrating things about being on council is um, <laughs> we can't hang out together, <laughs> you know, and I think every one of us probably would be very interested in being part of this thing, but for the, unless, you know, we can't have a quorum and that sort of thing. So, um, and I am not a council a committee chair anymore. And so, um, well, Sam, I, I would, I guess I would deviate a little bit from what Megan said in that I would, I would open it up to counsel because there's nothing like hearing it firsthand uh, to have an impact on counsel and, and have move things forward. But it may be, and I haven't thought this through, but it may be that we rotate how many counselors are up front, you know, and the other counselors could just be listening in the audience. Um, and, but I, I, I think it would be important. I think we're all very invested in this, this topic. So I think, I think it would be important for us to hear it firsthand if we could, if we're available. I think that a listening session is a good idea. And uh, whether, whether you call it an action session, I think that to do any kind of moving forward, you have to be witness to what the history and experience of people are. And so I think it's a great idea. Uh, at the Black Lives Matter protest in Bangor, 
one of the organizers is named David Patrick, and one of the things he suggested for the city of Bangor, which is where he lives, is to have a committee that would evaluate how the that municipality, uh, how there's racism that's ingrained in the policies of the of that municipality, and he was suggesting to have a, a I think he called it a board of people that would be reviewing all the policies of the town. That was one of the suggestions, uh, and that that would include people of color on that at that board. So taking that lead from someone who's been thinking about this a lot and is organizing to try to do anti-racism work, uh, that perhaps in addition to having representatives of the police and the town and the council, that we also have citizens from our town that are people of color that would be part of the convening, that would be the people doing the listening, uh, because that might put other people at ease when they came forward because there would be faces that aren't just representative of the authority that we all happen to be white. Uh, so I, I think that that I, I completely support what Megan's suggestion was, and I'd like to add that we might invite some some people to be on that, whatever that is we call it, whether it's a board, it's a council, it's a meeting, it's a gathering. So Cindy, where can we put this on the calendar so that we can, or on a workshop so that we can talk about it exclusively? I would, I was thinking, and Sophie, maybe you have a better place for it, but I was thinking under our work plan discussion, that we could we could kind of flush out what it is that we want to do with this um and because the work plan discussion is probably in the next two or three weeks yeah we usually do the work plan discussion cindy right after you pass the budget that becomes the next section of time um i would just if i could add a couple of cents um the thing i like about megan's idea and she talked to me a little bit about it is that it doesn't assume that the Orono Police Department is doing anything bad. It is simply a fact-finding mission. And I think we can find out how the community perceives the Orono Police Department. We can look at how the national policies that we have in place maybe could be tweaked. Um, I will tell you that as soon as we, I think, as soon as you guys make a citizen type of advisory board when quite honestly the Orno Town Council is that and you have more power because you're our bosses quite honestly um, but as soon as you do that it will seem to feel I think like police against other things whereas what you're suggesting is everybody coming together the only thing I would ask you guys to think about is perhaps getting a professional facilitator to be able to facilitate those discussions and do the pre-work with council and staff um, to be able to understand kind of the touch points and, and what we're trying to get out of it. So it's not just walking into a room and having people say, hey. I agree. But I, I, yeah, I do think that sooner is, is better than later and I think that this we could talk about this um, as a significant piece of the work plan for next year. Good. Yep. I think that makes good sense and kind of give some thought as to how what type of facilitator and what kind of budget do we have for it so. Sure. Good conversation everybody thank you. Yeah, yeah sure. very good. Everybody that contributed to this this is our Yes. Cheryl, do, do you have or could you maybe forward me some names of yes. some people that maybe we could do a little bit of vetting and find out pricing and mm -hmm. structure so I could bring that to the work plan? Session? Yeah, I have a there's a whole collaborative in um, Port, the Portland area. So, yes, I, I just my father in law, but he's too close to me. So, <laughs> okay, <laughs> great. Um, is there anything else council has before we go to the brief town manager update? No. Nope. So, uh, Lori? Uh, yes, I went to a meeting last week at uh, Senator, excuse me, with uh, Congressman 
uh, Golden's staff. It was uh, convened by a, a city councilor of Lewiston, and she invited individuals from different CD2 municipalities. And so the mayor of Bangor was there, and I was there, and uh, there were a lot of people who were interested. She decided to make it only one person. If Megan was interested, she decided the woman who organized it only one person per town. So the town manager of Belfast and the uh, chair of Millinocket. Uh, anyway, so it was a group of us that we spoke with uh, Jared Golden's office specifically because they were interested in finding out how the, what were the impacts of COVID-19 and addressing COVID-19 on each municipality. And we all said, well, we're just one person in a municipality. Uh, and, and so the request was from the Jared Golden's office, could, could our municipality send uh, some summary of, of what the impacts are? And also they were interested in stories because of course the Congressman, when he goes to try to advocate for one major change that he and, and Senator Collins and Senator King have been advocating for is that uh, in future funding packages, municipalities under 500,000 people would be able, or excuse me, government entities under 500,000 people would be able to get direct money. Because right now money for anything under 500,000 people goes to the state, which means even Portland cannot get direct, direct money. Uh, from, so that's an example of then that way individual towns could say, we need money for these things and get and perhaps apply directly and not have to wait for the state to be a gatekeeper on the cash. Uh, anyway, so uh, Sophie had already prepared something for Senator Collins' office, and she's going to modify that to um, to send, or she modified it today. No. Yep, we. I I sent it to you right before. Yeah. Um, okay. Yes, and I saw all that. It was changed Collins to Golden, I think. Okay, great. So then I'll forward that on from from our uh, town, and I will keep you posted because the Golden's office requested that we we these towns meet again. And so whenever that happens, it might be one of the other of people on our town council or Sophie would represent our town in the future meetings. There was less than 48 hours between the, hey, we have this idea, let's meet and it happening. So we'll be, the next one will be a better one. Great, Good. thank you. Um, all right, I think we're up to town manager's update. Just a couple of things. Um, First, just to give you a little heads up that we've got some things happening at town um, at the council meeting. Um, Nancy and I are finalizing an agenda. I hope to have it to Cindy to look at um, at a reasonable time tomorrow morning, maybe. How about uh, around 11 or 11.15? Sure. That's when I'm coming in. <laughs> oh, I'll leave it for you then for you to look at. I have a doctor's appointment, but will be long after that. Um, so on that agenda though, just to give you a heads up, because we haven't had workshops or committee meetings, we had talked in the past about this infrastructure reserve. I'm gonna put that item on the um, agenda to establish it and move certain monies. I'd like some flexibility so I don't move more money in there than if we need it to balance the budget. Um, we have the solar moratorium um, public hearing. We have not, you've not actually seen the language, the moratorium language yet, um, but we could do the public hearing which had been noticed and um, you can't adopt the ordinance until July 13th anyway. So that gives us change to make, time to make changes. We've got a TIF extension for the um, Envision Net TIF. And um, we've got a pride proclamation um, that is on the agenda. I have Bangor's pride um, proclamation. That's very, somebody did a great job for Bangor. Um, it's, so it needs to be, I, I would like it to be more Orono-esque. And so I thought I would work on it a little bit and kind of thought I'd go back to the folks that are gonna help me on the pride stuff anyway, and see if I could get them to help me with some edits. So when it came to you, it looked like a more Orono centric. <laughs> I do have an idea for an inclusion yeah. point on that. And I don't know if you want me to tell me now, tell you now or. You wanna, can you email it to me? I will or? email it to you, sure. That would be awesome. That way I won't forget. I'll let you fix the wording, but I just yeah. will give some that, Anything, I, I would love to have some more words because 
Um, yeah. And I'll just tell you the first thing I did as a intern for the city of Bangor when I was doing my master's degree was a speech for the mayor back in 1994 for recognition of the June, when was it? June 17th um, murder. So that was my very first foray into municipal government. Um, so when we look at the agenda for the meeting, um, this is going to be a bit of a dance because we will have public comment and public, the ability for public members of the public to be recognized. I think, Cindy, you would want that like during public hearing. And so just bear with us a little bit in your agenda, the annotated agenda that you get. I, I am planning to make notes for staff anyway about who I know is going to be speaking about certain things. Um, so that we can elevate people, have them speak, and then put them back into the attendees role. Or if they wrote a comment, could we designate a town staff person to read the comment, maybe? Uh, we could do that. Bell could do that. Bell's been doing a great job. Bell's also been typing in the comments that we get um, if you don't see them. So we'll kind of try to work through that and give you a plan so that yeah. you know what's happening. Yeah. Um, we, so the social media posts have hit about um, the um, Silk Memorial Bridge and um, the, I just got a picture of the signs that have come in. They're large, um, yellow, orangey yellow. They're up. Uh, with black. Oh, he already put them up? They're up. I saw them 20 nice. minutes, uh, two hours ago. Yep. They weren't there this morning when I went walking. So um, so I think I have carried the water with that. I think that I've done what you guys wanted me to do with that. Um, we continue to work on um, a solution for Ghoul's Landing. Um, we've ordered the signs because we got to do some signs and some with some sign poles. We're going to have to do um, there's a process that goes, can't just throw something in the ground these days. Um, and we've ordered the stickers, got ordered today. So we should be set to be able to begin opening that up a little bit. CDC changed some of its guidance on porta potties, which is going to make things a lot easier for us. Um, and uh, we are finding that spe police special details out there will be covered by FEMA at 90%. So I think we're in pretty good shape there. Um, I'm, I'm excited about kind of where we are. There have been some uh, questions about why we are taking one position at Wolves Landing and Netto Savoy Park and another one at Webster Park. They're two very different um, properties. Uh, Webster Park is huge and you can put a significant number of people in there without having to worry about social distancing. We also have not historically had major problems with overcrowding and misuse at Webster, and we have that at Goulds. And, um, you know, I, I know that people are upset and we're trying to move forward. I think that Josh and Mitch have come up with a good plan um, understand that with all plans we're going to roll it out it's a quick fix and um, we know that we might need to make tweaks um, for next year but the thought is that Orono residents would when they register their cars just get the sticker um, in the future it's going to be hard this year but for coming years so that that can, would be good can someone that whose registration isn't coming up but uses the park can they come in and get a sticker they could call us, they could email us, they could come get one. We've got to tie it to a license plate because if you register your car in Orono, you, um, you are, I know I'm getting your excise tax, which means you're paying for the privilege of this. You know, I mean, it's a, and if we have people who are like bikers or live out there that don't have cars, we, we'll just need an address. Um, 
Well, actually, we won't because they won't need to park. What am I thinking? Never mind. Continue. I just registered my car today. Where's my sticker, Sophie? The sticker isn't here yet. Oh, jeez. Um, the sticker is not here yet. We just ordered it today. Would you like us to send you one? That'd be lovely. I'll pick it up next time I'm swinging by. All right. So, so this um, is great. That means you're out. You're gonna have parking spaces that aren't for the for motorized boats. And so, what we're where we are is um, the trailers are gonna stay just like they always have. They're just trailer only parking, and then. Um, we i think we're i think it ended up being two parking spaces that will be delineated for paddlers and then the rest of the spaces with the exception of the handicap the handicap space will be permit parking only and our plan is that residents will be able to get those permits and if we get questioned on that and we have to look at non-resident then we'd have to implement a charge for that and that can come back to council. But there are spaces that would be available for non-residents to use the landing, which is the part that we have to keep open. Am I making sense? Um, what else? I think that would be my brief town manager's re Sophie, report. Sophie, what's the status of the fluoride vote with with VZ, like where are we in that? Cause it kind of came to an abrupt halt it, it, like everything else. It did, I'm gonna need to talk to Mark because we had pushed it to November thinking that this was just a short lived piece. And I don't know, is council wanting to um, still go ahead in November and just begin our education and outreach via the new um, platforms or do you wanna push it until next June. I think that's a bigger discussion. You want to add that to a workshop? Work yeah. Well, that's going to be part of our work plan, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'd like, I'd like to think through how educating, how we get education to the public before um, we decide when the vote should be. So, why don't I invite Mark to join us when we have our next workshop and we can talk about that. Um, because I think it would be interesting for us to hear where VZ is as well. Because we, we have to do it together. One of, we can't do it on different elections. Nope, that sounds good. Cool. Okay, if that is the last part of the update, and we will move on to a Monday meeting. And so I guess I'm, we're adjourned. <laughs> See you all.